joining us for this week's Your Health segment is Dr. Lisa Shockett, an ophthalmologist with the University of Maryland Medical Center and associate professor and vice chair for clinical affairs at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences. Doctor, thank you for being with us. I'm sure everybody's heard there's an eclipse in two weeks. Very exciting. How does that wind up hurting people's eyes? What, what happens? Well, we all know that we were told as kids not to look directly at the sun, but sometimes the excitement of the eclipse, we might forget ourselves and actually look directly at the sun, and our eyes weren't meant for that. If we stare directly at the sun, the front of the eye, the cornea and the lens can magnify those sun's rays and actually cause a burn to the back of the eye, the retina, and then you're ending up with damage and potential loss of vision. How long does it take for that damage to occur? A quick glance or longer? Unfortunately, it can be just a quick glance. It's hard to know from the studies and from different reports because people report, oh, I just looked up for a second. Sure. Who knows how long they were actually looking. Um, but as people reported, it is a very brief amount of time. So you think you might be squinting or looking away quickly, but it really isn't quick enough. It's not a good idea to look at the sun at all during the eclipse without protective eyewear. So in our part of the country, it's gonna be something like 60% of the sun that's hidden behind the, behind the moon, but not too far away, South Carolina, uh, 100%. Which is more worrisome to eye doctors? Which is more dangerous? It depends on, I guess, how well we educate the public. During, in the area where there is the total eclipse, so that's called the path of totality, where the sun um, is completely blocked by the moon, so there's an, about two, two and a half minutes of complete darkness. And in that period of time, you can actually take off the solar eclipse glasses, but people need to be careful and uh, make sure that they're uncovering their, keeping their eyes covered when, when the partial eclipse is back into view. So in our area, most importantly, there is no time period where you can look at the eclipse without the protective eyewear. Let's see the protective eyewear. You, you brought some... So I, yeah, I have some samples of the glasses, and, and you can see that they are they completely like, dark. Yeah, it's like, they're completely uh, dark. I, and I can't see really anything at all through these things. Are you meant to see through them, or is it just meant to cover your eyes? You can only see the sun's rays, so really is protecting or blocking out 99% of visible light and almost all of the infrared spectrum of light as well. So that's what's protecting you from the, the sun. The other question with something like this, and these look legit, there was some you know, brand name uh, affiliation to it, but I, I wouldn't frankly bet my eyesight or my children's eyesight on, on any piece of anything. I mean, just, the, the risk is too great. I, yeah, I understand your point. Uh, NASA recommends speci these specific glasses which have a specific certification and you can look on them. It says ISO 12312-2 on the side. Um, and you want to have that specific certification. You also want to examine them and make sure that they're not cracked or scratches on it because as you can imagine, if they're cracked or scratched, more, sun more of the sun's rays can go through the glasses. Um, and you just tested them out. If you put them on and you can see in the room, then they're not working. But okay, if, so that's a good point. Yeah. If, you, if you want to test some of these, you need to be able to see almost nothing. Uh, I, I shined a, basically a flashlight through it and could just see the faintest sign of that. Uh, if anybody has a question for the doctor, give us a call. The number's up on the screen, or you can tweet. Uh, Twitter address is at MPT News. If somebody's just walking down the street, and the eclipse is going on. Are they in any danger at all if they don't look up? No, so you wouldn't be in danger. It's really only for looking at the eclipse. But you can't change your mind last minute and be walking around outside and say, let me take a peek because the burn on the retina can occur quite quickly. You sent over some, some pictures of uh, retinas, the, the back of the eye. They look like uh, oranges. Uh, what, what are we looking at there? So on the very top, the green photos, those are photos of, that are 
sort of cross sections of the retina, and right smack in the center is where the burn is. And then if you look at the color pictures, there's just sort of faint yellow spot, and that's mm. not normal. So those four photos at the top are what we call acute solar retinopathy. Would somebody feel that? I mean, is there any pain associated with the, the burn that caused that? Often, no. So this can certainly go unrecognized. And we see things that are similar to solar retinopathy in other cases, for instance, kids playing with laser pointers or wow. um, also patients who might have some mental alterations or on drugs who are staring at the sun w without knowing and can get burns without pain or anything. Is there anything you can do for them by way of treatment? Unfortunately, no. The good news is, is if you look at the bottom of those photos, a lot of the injury fades. So, so a lot of the damage fades with time. Some people are left with some permanent loss of vision and little blind spots, um, but a lot of it can fade. We, we can't rely on that, though. Let's grab a phone call. Howard County, this is Steve. Steve, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Sure thing. Good evening, everybody. My question uh, regards these uh, NASA glasses for people that uh, wear glasses. Um, should you put one in front of the other, or does it really matter? Uh, how should uh, how should that go? Thanks. Great question. Thank you. Steve, thanks for the question. That is a great question. You want to put them so that the glasses are in between the sun uh, in front of the in front of your glasses. So just like he was putting them on over. Uh, his glasses, you want to put it over the glasses to protect your eyes. Otherwise, your actual glasses will magnify the sun's rays and create a burn onto the solar eclipse glasses. What if I tried to look at it indirectly with, with a smartphone, you know, somehow looking up at the sun and looking at the picture? It's the same concept of using a ca any kind of camera or binocular, and it's the same concept of when you were a kid and you used a magnifying lens to burn a leaf, you're using the sun's rays, which creates some heat, onto another object. So if you're holding up the camera or the binoculars, you're using the lens of the camera to, to create some magnification onto your eyes and worsen the burn. Let's do a uh, one more call quickly. It's Joseph in Baltimore County. What's your question? Every time there is an eclipse, I hear warnings from the good, from people such as this doctor about the proposition of looking at the sun. But in everyday life, we look up at the sun, if if only at a, for a glancing moment. We we look for uh, clouds that are forming. Uh, we look Very at birds. Very good. So what's the what's the difference? I don't know that if you're actually in every day. Yeah, a, you're glancing up for a second. I don't think you're really staring at directly at the sun. I've never stared directly at the sun, so maybe it's just a quick glance that you're doing so in everyday our life. Bottom line advice is don't stare at the sun, whether there's an eclipse or no eclipse. Correct, but doctor. Thank you very much. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.